1963's March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom is an event remembered not only for its soul-stirring rhetoric, but for the change it spurred. One year later, the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Two years later, the Voting Rights Act. The decades that followed have been filled with both progress and hardships, including the assassination of the leader of that history-making march. Saturday, leaders from around the country gathered to reflect on both and chart a path forward. Mark Morial was among them. He's the CEO of the National Urban League and former mayor of New Orleans. He's also the husband of CBS News correspondent Michelle Miller. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. What does the anniversary... No, thank you. Um, what does the anniversary mean for you? It means both a reflection but a commitment to continue the work and to recognize that uh, we've not come as far as we should have come, but that we have seen some significant progress. But the gaps remain, John. The economic gaps, the unemployment rates uh, for Black people are twice as high. The home ownership rates are 30% lower. The wealth gap is more than 10 to 1. All of these pressing challenges remain. And then as we left the march uh, on Saturday and turned on CBS News, there it was, mm -hmm. uh, the despicable, hateful, racist hate crime taking place in Jacksonville, Florida. So it put a damper on what was a positive day of hope and reaffirmation and continuation. Uh, and we want to remind Americans that we live at a time when our democracy is under threat, that there's a difference between democracy and autocracy, a difference between an America which is tolerant and an America which is hateful. So we've got tremendous work that we need to do. I want to stick, Mark, on that question, of, on that point of hope. You know, the march took place in a time of both extraordinary hope among those who participated, but also the same kind of violence. Uh, institutions designed to keep black Americans from uh, accessing democracy and freedom. But hope was sustained. What's your sense of the ability to sustain hope in the current moment? Um, and where are the avenues towards rekindling some of that spirit of hope from 60 years ago? John, that's, that's a perfect question. And we sustain hope when we, uh, when we as Americans of, of all backgrounds, Black, white, Latino, Asian, those who are both Christian and Jew and Muslim and Hindu uh, and Buddhist and all religions, when people of all gender identities and genders and communities and regions across the country, when, we de when we're determined, determined to be hopeful, we're determined to fix what is broken with American democracy. I believe that the participants in the march represented a coalition. And that coalition must be more assertive, must be more vocal. That coalition's power can be felt at the ballot box. It can be felt at the public square. Back in 1963, uh, the challenges that faced the nation may have been greater than those that face us today. Today, we have the intelligence. We have the resources. Uh, I think we have the will. But we've got to exercise it. And our enemy is complacency. Our enemy is silence. Our enemy is being complicit in not recognizing that these threats are not just threats to black Americans and their progress, but threats to the fundamental values of American democracy. So there is hope. Let me, as a final question, Mark, you know, in, in 1963, focusing on the vote was, a, was um, you know, focused the mind in a way. And, and, and is there a single solution among those issues you already mentioned that can have that kind of galvanizing uh, effect in this current moment? While I don't think there's a single solution, John, voting and electing people who share the values I've expressed is paramount to this battle. We went through an effort to commit an insurrection. Witness the contrast between those on January 6th who, to express their political uh, views, sought to use violence compared to all of us that were on the mall on Saturday that had a peaceful protest with no incidents. We want the American people to understand that comparative. We're passionate uh, about the need for an America which respects and tolerates all, but we respect 
uh, the right to protest, the right to assemble, and to do it peacefully, in contrast to those that use violence to achieve their political means. There's a, a moral difference between the two. Mark Morial, CEO of the National Urban League, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you for having me.